Now, we continue to discuss the Section 189 retrenchment process that is currently happening at the SABC, but it's not just this organization that is going through this. Many media businesses and other industries have been ravaged by a weak economy or mismanagement or the coronavirus pandemic or some all of the above, and they've had to undergo the same or similar processes. But what are the rights of the employer and affected employees in this regard? So let's discuss this now with Labour analyst Terry Bell. Terry, good morning. Uh, thanks for speaking to us here on uh, Morning Live. Good to see you again. Uh, good morning to you too, Sakina. Now, Terry, first, uh, first off, um, this was, of course, a time, a year that's been very difficult for many South Africans. And if you look at the statistics released about the number of South Africans who've lost their jobs, it, it really makes you weep. But let's start with how employers have approached this particular situation and what are their rights with regard to actually laying people off? Well, the point is, you see, there's the one section that's being used, the one that's being used actually at the SABC, Section 189 of the Labor Relations Act. Now, what this means is that an employer may dismiss workers on the basis of operational requirements. In other words, I have too many workers for the amount of work that needs to be done, or it's costing me too much, or I cannot survive um, unless we retrench. And on that basis, the employer then has a legal obligation to consult at the most incredible level. The employer should consult with everyone concerned, whether it's unions, workplace forums, and with the individuals involved. Any suggestions that are made regarding retrenchments also should be made in writing. So, I mean, the, the Act actually says that the employer, the workers, the unions, their representatives, etc., should try for consensus to, in the first place, try to avoid dismissals. In the second place, to minimize any dismissals that may be agreed should be necessary. To change, perhaps, the timing of the dismissals, mitigate the adverse effects. <laughs> there are plenty of adverse effects if a worker is dismissed, not necessarily for the employer, but certainly for the employee. And then there are issues like, you know, severance pay and how one selects. What is the method to be used which should be agreed? and to who should actually be retrenched. So these are all laid down in law, and it is the obligation of the employer to be transparent about this. In the, the case of the SABC, of course, because the SABC is a public, not a state broadcaster, where the stakeholder is the government, who should be acting on behalf of us, the public. So therefore, there's an even greater requirement for transparency right across the board, commercial considerations aside. Now, Terry, as um, I had alluded to previously, this situation of retrenchments and job losses is not one that's peculiar to the SABC. Um, looking at how many people have lost their jobs during this lockdown period, is there a case, for example, that some of the employers actually used COVID-19 as a front to get rid of workers that perhaps they had been wanting to get rid of even before the lockdown? Well, I'm sure that's the case, just as there are many employers, and uh, the UIF people can tell you this, although there have been no, well, very few prosecutions as far as I know, of employers who have never bothered to register or to pay UIF which is why you have so many workers now trying to claim the UAF that was taken off them and was never actually given to the UIF. So, yes, you're always going to find dishonest employers as well. What is doubly worrying about the... And we're talking not in terms of even thousands, tens, or even hundreds of that. We're talking about millions of people, women and men, who are out of work now. 2.2 million in the last three months. Okay, they said five, uh, 593,000, I think, came back to work. That still means one and a half million extra people out of work. Now, in the last six months, we've also had, and this is doubly worrying, it's not just because we happen to be journalists or I happen to be a journalist, and that is that 700 media workers, mainly journalists, have also lost their jobs. Now, the role of the media is vitally important. It's like, for example, if firefighters lose their jobs, you have a problem, especially when it's the fire season. If journalists lose their jobs, you have less coverage of what is going on. They're supposed to be the eyes and ears of the public at large. People can't get out everywhere, but journalists have that obligation 
that right to be able to do that. And the fewer you have, the more rundown newsrooms are, and this is happening, magazines have closed, publications have closed, local community newspapers, vital in many areas for local people to know what is going on in their area and to bring into the in public domain the debates that really matter. They're gone. And that is very, very worrying. So, uh, you know, it's overall, I don't think that we're facing a crisis. I think we're facing a, a major humanitarian disaster. Indeed. And what we're seeing at the SABC now is, of course, that there is pushback from the workforce here at the SABC. Um, many other people would not have had that opportunity because they were sitting at home during a lockdown and may have been informed via email or um, SMS or a call, if that courtesy was even extended, that they are now out of a job. We are naturally not a very litigious society, uh, Terry, but do you anticipate that we will be seeing a lot of cases? Will the CCMA and the Labour Court be flooded um, with uh, claims of unfair dismissals? The Labour Court and the CCMA are already grossly inundated by cases. This is what is happening now. And uh, you have a situation, you say we're not litigious. Well, we, the ordinary people and working people, are generally not litigious, but I have a look at what's happening at this sort of elite level and the way that people who have been openly accused and have publicly stated by journalists often that are wrongdoing and malfeasance they've been involved in, who have simply gone to court and to court and to court and to appeal and to re re review, etc. So at an elite level, we are having a lot of, of uh, litigious behaviour. And Terry, we have to wrap it, but uh, just in closing this off, looking at what's playing out at the SABC now, and I'm asking you specifically about this because it is playing out rather publicly, um, the Section 189 process and how it's been handled so far. What's your view on how the SABC has handled the situation? I don't think there's been enough transparency. It should have been made wide open. They should have gone back and given the history as well. People should remember how the SABC got into this mess in the first place. That apparent charlatan, Claudia Mutsuneng, who employed people in certain positions, who increased his own wages, let alone others, etc. The fact that even the union, the Communication Workers Union, at the height of this, when he was being accused and when uh, one of the ministers at the time said, Baba loves Laudi, um, we re must should remember these things was invited him, Saudi Mutsuneng, to be a guest of honour at a major union dinner. So, you know, it's a question of there's a multitude of complex um, captures, etc., influences, manipulations. I think all this should be, all that dirty linen should come out, be washed in the open and hung out to dry. I think that the most important thing, however, for the workers there as well, is that there should be total transparency right across the board. And I don't think there's been enough of that now. There's been a lot of confusion. Yes, we have consulted. No, you haven't. What have you consulted about? Oh, we have consulted about this. Who did you consult with? Let's hear exactly what has happened. Terry Bell, as always, a pleasure speaking to you. Thanks uh, to Labour analyst Terry Bell giving us some overall analysis about Section 189 processes and also his thoughts on it being implemented here at the SABC.